Now to... Ashkin Expert! We've upgraded the jingle since you were last here, Royden. And today we have financial planner Royden Schotter of Echelon Advisors. Welcome back, Royden. Thank you. It is a pleasure to have you here. Uh, a lot of people are very concerned about low interest rates at the moment at the banks. Um, so what is it all about? Are they finding it hard to get a return on their money? They are, and it can, it can go low. So How low can it go? Yeah, going back to the GFC, the central banks around the world flooded the markets with a lot of liquidity. Everyone thought it was going to turn into lots of inflation. Um, so far, not so much. Uh, mm -hmm. And interest rates are, are really low. So how low can it go, though? Well, look, anecdotally, um, I've been hearing stories back, if you've got your money in a Swiss bank account, they're charging you for it. So that makes no sense whatsoever. That just seems absolutely bizarre. Because when we think low interest rates, I often think, oh, it means we can get a mortgage at a lower interest rate, but then you're not making money on your money either, are you? No, you're not. That's and look, over the long term, it's entirely possible. While in the medium term, we're expecting this to come back and interest rates will return. Over the long term, it's very possible that returns on investments globally are just not going to be what they once were. So what does it mean then for people here? So if the older generation can't get what they need from their investments, what do they need to do? Well, they may have to get used to spending it. As in spending it not on like, let's go on a holiday, as in no, we need just to live. They're going to have to be more careful with it. Um, for those people that were already planning on spending it, the extra little bit that they thought they may have been getting from interest may not be there in the same way that it used to be. And for those people that had big wads of money, the anticipation that they were never going to, their capital was mm. never going to go down. Live off the interest. They might not get that. Okay, so just that's something to look out for. And for young people, it's very hard to buy a house right now because of prices, etc. I mean, what do they invest in? I'm seeing the trend for a while, in fact, uh, for a few years now. I've been seeing people coming in, and rather than dropping, you know, taking the big plunge into an Auckland house, for example, yeah. with that huge mortgage, sure. that crippling debt, uh, they're choosing instead to buy an investment property, not because they want to become a property investor, but because they're using it as a stepping stone into their own home. And so then they're renting as well? Yeah, they're renting. They're renting locally, where maybe close to work or just... Where they want to live. Where they want to live. But the things they're buying might be, if they're Aucklanders, they might be outside of Auckland. Yeah. Um, people outside of Auckland maybe not so happy about that. But uh, if it means that they've got a lower debt or if it means that they can pay that off faster and then maybe buy another one, eventually it'll unwind and they'll end up owning their own home. Okay, so just quickly now, I want to ask you, as a financial pl planner, how are you helping people? What do you do? Initially, when people come and see me, it's usually with one thing in mind. They want to fix their KiwiSaver or their investments yep. or they want to get some insurance. Um, and we sort that out for them. We, we make that work. Um, but then after that, um, I'm always thinking about the big picture. Even when they're not, I'm always thinking, what are their... What, what options do they have, what are their assets, what are their resources, how can we improve their world for them? And we, using our modelling software, we uh, plug all the information in and show them something they've never seen before. Come up with a plan. Come up with a plan. So if somebody was coming to see you for the first time, what would it cost? Roughly? For the first time, it wouldn't actually cost anything. I'm, I'm really pro trying to blow this, this myth away that uh, getting advice must be hard or expensive. So what does it cost ongoing then? Well, initially nothing to see me if there's something to do at the end of an hour um, or an hour and a half or two hours whatever it might take to get a really solid yeah. grip on the world if there's something to do then then great we we push on okay um uh, i will make my money out of insurance or out of investments um but after that i try and not charge if i can possibly help it wow that sounds fantastic <laughs> okay i'm starting up to come and see you for some advice great advice thank you so much for coming back to us royden uh, and if you want to find out more make sure that you head along to the echelonadvisors.co.nz website